So the Lord recently showed me somebody who is about to pass away. And this is an interesting message. If y'all need some sort of confirmation that something like this could potentially be from the Lord, um, first off, I would encourage you to pray about it before running with it, before accepting it. Ask the Holy Spirit what he says and then wait upon the Lord. Wait till you get a confirmation either way. But the second thing I would encourage you to do is go watch the video below. God actually spoke to me about the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, going home. And listen, I shared that prophetic word 10 days before she passed away. And that was right before her health started to significantly decline and all that kind of stuff. So I shared that message without knowing where she was health wise. And, and that was literally 10 days before she left this earth. And so I believe that was a very strong confirmation that God was speaking very clearly and accurately there. And there was a reason for that. God also shared a very encouraging prophetic word through me to those listening in that message as well. And that was the reason he did that. It wasn't just like to be a sign and a wonder for no reason. But the person that God spoke to me about here today, I don't know what person it is specifically, but I'm going to share what I heard. And then we're going to have to wait and see after the fact who he's talking about. But I also believe that this is not a curse. So if God speaks something like this ahead of time, God's not cursing somebody. And God is not saying this in a vengeful way or anything like that. I believe God simply knows when it's our time, right? And sometimes he will speak that to certain people. Another thing that happened before I got a message for a pastor actually here in Texas, and he told me who this pastor was at the time. And I said, Lord, it sounds like he is about to pass away. Is that what's happening here? And I wasn't sure. And I was actually a little scared of sharing that word. And listen, y'all, I did not share it right away. A couple of weeks later, I prayed about it and I pulled it out. And I just went to research his ministry a little bit so I could send it to somebody at the ministry because the Lord was telling me to share it. And y'all, I found out in the news when I went to research the ministry that he had passed away four days after I heard that word, four days. And in, at that point, it was too late to share the word with him. And it was a very encouraging word from the Lord about God taking care of things after he left. And y'all, so God works in ways sometimes that we don't expect, but I'm going to share this word. I heard this on November 4th. I don't know who specifically it is, but I believe that we're going to see this take place. I saw a banjo and some insane music written on music sheets. So it looked insane to me because all I can play is very simple things on the piano. And it was like lots of crazy you know, music. And then I heard a bluegrass legend is about to pass on into eternity. And I heard strange passing, but he knows where he is going. And he said, heaven is his home. And the Lord asked me to get this one out quickly. And uh, then I heard the Lord say this today as I was preparing for this video. He said, let me build your house as you build my home. So when we start thinking about eternity, we start thinking about the next life. We start thinking about how long we have here, may, for some of us longer than others. We have to consider where our permanent residence is. Uh, this is not our home <laughs> here on earth. And the word even talks about how Abraham in uh, Hebrews 11, 10, it actually says, for he was looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. See, Abraham made decisions in his life that were based on eternal consequences and based on instruction from God himself, not just from Abraham's own heart. And I'm going to make this very short, but this is the message God has given me to share. Sometimes even as Christians, we start to look at the things we want in this life and we start to value those things so highly that we start to make our decisions based on the goals that we have per here and now and that becomes the end and we start justifying the decisions we're making based on a temporary end instead of an eternal one this is first kings 8 17 it says now it was in the heart of my father david to build a house for the name of the lord the god of israel this is Solomon saying that David wanted to build God a temple, right? And then it says 18, but the Lord said to my father, David, because it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. So God loved this about David, that he wanted to build him a temple, right? But God did not ask David to do that. Instead, he asked Solomon to do that, right? And David prepared the way. He did what God told him to do. He did everything God told him to do according to to all the preparations that were needed. And then Solomon was the one that actually fulfilled that and built the temple. But look what God promises to David because this was in his heart. Second Samuel 7, 11, he says, even from the day that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies, 
the Lord also declares to you that the Lord will make a house for you. So God goes on to respond to David and he makes some specific promises. One being that he is going to establish his lineage, that he is always going to have someone ruling on the throne in his descendant line, right? And ultimately he fulfilled that through Jesus Christ, who was of the line of David. But what do we see in the character of David? Does he make some big mistakes? Yes, absolutely. But what we see is a man who started to rise to a position of authority and he started to get a lot of prayers answered in his life, right? <laughs> like a lot of things started going his way. He could have hashtag blessed, you know, if he had had Instagram back then or whatever. But, you know, that's what happens sometimes in our lives. We, we get an answer to prayers, things start going our way, and then it feels good and we start prioritizing that over what God has asked us to do. But the word talks about in Ephesians 2, it says that God raised us up with him and seated us with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. So if we are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places already in the spirit realm, you already are, the word says, if you know Jesus. So there's no getting around that. It's, it's a reality based on scripture. Listen, if you're already there, then that should be the priority now because that's where we're going fully then once we pass on, right? We're gonna be fully invested and everything's gonna be there, right? And anything that was temporary is gonna be left behind and ultimately gonna burn away. So if that's where we're headed, that should be the priority now. And what did God say in this prophetic word? He said, let me build your house as you build my home. See, Jesus says in Matthew chapter six, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. It's so easy to get so focused on building our own name or our own lineage or our own house or our own career or our own family, whatever it is. And, you know, and those things are important to an extent, especially your family, you know, should be one of the highest priorities in your life. But we should never prioritize the temporary over the eternal. See, sometimes we start prioritizing the house in which our family lives instead of how close our family is to God. We, we start prioritizing things that look good on the outside, but that don't really have a kingdom purpose to them. They don't have a lasting impact to them. Now, God can use those things for his kingdom, but I just sense the Lord saying this right now. I have a better way. I have a better way. Don't go the world's way. Don't fall for that trap. The things here don't last. I have an eternal kingdom for you to start investing in now. And you can trust that every single treasure that you store there is going to last. The things here don't last, but the things there are of lasting value. The Lord saying, I will make a way for you to fulfill the things that I've placed inside of your heart here and now, if you will begin to prioritize my kingdom first. See, God has put good desires in many of our hearts. Now we need to submit those desires to the Lord and see if they're from him or not. But many of the good desires that we start pursuing, we miss out on if we're not pursuing them God's way and if we're not prioritizing his kingdom. Listen, this, this is not a manipulation game. This is not a, okay, God, well, I'm going to try to prioritize this first, so then you can give me that. Like, that's not how it works. This is a surrender. <laughs> we need to take everything and surrender it to him and say, Jesus, you've loved me perfectly and you were willing to give up everything. So anything you want me to give, anything you want me to hand over today, I'm handing it back to you. And then listen, anything God hands back to you is great. It's part of the blessing. But don't hold anything back and see what the Lord is willing to do through your life. And I just sense that is a word for someone today. Don't hold anything back and see what God is willing to do through you. He loves you and he has a good plan for you. It's better than your plan for yourself, better than my plan for myself. Don't hold on to your own plan. Well, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I don't wanna do that. And the ways that I have done that, I have to say, Lord, help me to let go again and help me to hold on to your plan and to surrender to you today, Holy Spirit. So I love y'all so much. I hope this has been encouraging. I'll see you next time.